What's going on guys? Deathwatch Gaming back with another video for you guys today. Today I'll be playing one of the most cliche and easiest supports to pick up, Nautilus. I am super sorry about the hiatus in videos guys. I know, you know, you were probably like looking for me to post something. My life's just been super crazy in ways I can't, like, that would go super long into. I'm going to try to get back to a more, like, regular schedule now. Keep doing, like, my week, every two week thing from now on. But I'm going to say something. If you guys are avid League players, you may not like this, but Nautilus is basically discount Thresh. Now, what do I mean by that? Nautilus does everything Thresh does, but he's easier and he doesn't scale as well. And so I'll give you an example. Thresh scales because his passive, the soul collecting, gives him armor and ability power. Nautilus has a flat rate. He has a predetermined rate. He doesn't scale off his passive. So Nautilus might be stronger earlier, and, but Thresh is ultimately going to be better later on because he has that infinite build potential. And so here's the other thing. Nautilus is really, really good as a starting support because he's very, very easy to pick up. He has, he has very inherent CC, so it's not really difficult to even like do it too much with him. Actually get CC on a target, and a lot of his abilities are more focused on CC than damage. Another reason why Thresh will ultimately become stronger than him. And then he's very, very tanky. I'm going to go with just your classic support items. I do pick up, so I know some people like to pick up, uh, where is it here? Like to pick up Steel Shoulder Guards. Always Relic Shield, because if you look, Nautilus' abilities are pretty much all AP. Except for this one. So Nautilus is passive, basically. He gets an empowered casing attack against a new target. I think it has like a 5 second timer. About that. Seconds Every 6 seconds. So that's empowered with the base physical attack damage. And it also roots the target. This is why Nautilus is a little bit better CC wise. And then his Q, again, you hurl it, you catch someone, you do magic damage, and you stun them. The cool thing is you can actually use this to skate around the map. And notice that the cooldown is half and the mana cost is half. So this can really help with Nautilus' mobility. A little bit better than Thresh. His W gives him a shield, basically based on his Minions overall max system. health, and it also gives him just extra attack damage, actually extra bonus magic damage. Is he Riptide? It basically does a little circle around him, a little splash of water, does some ability power damage, and then does some slowing. To be honest, it's not really like a significant amount of slowing. The damage and the ability power I haven't really seen is too significant, to be honest with you. And his ultimate is basically you mark someone with like a giant tide that you shoot out, and that tide follows them. It's not going to stop until it hits the target. What I like though is that a lot of people will not realize this, and they'll run backwards or run towards their allies, and anyone in the way of it gets knocked up. So you saw right there that nice little timer that they added in kind of tells you, hey, this is when you can use your passive again. So ultimately, I will be maxing Q W E just because. Q, go-to spell, always. W, it's super nice in attacks just because I feel like it does more damage. And at the same time, it's slightly more useful. It slows cool, but I feel like you need to be more tanky and survivable than you do slowing them. And then, big thing, Sunfire Cape got changed. So not only does it deal passive damage, but when you use an immobilizing effect, it actually deals extra damage to it. This is huge because Nautilus has such inherent CC. This is going to be Silas, so what? this is going to have to be like a protect the president kind of thing. Because Silas, as we all know, likes to jump in, go attack, attack, attack. I need to stop him from getting to misfortune. Like so. I did use the ignite there, kind of hoping to kill him. I don't know if I want to flash to this. And you see, at the end of the day, there's two people, so the target changes. My Q's almost back up. We are going to get a first blood, guys. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. You see, that's how strong Nautilus is. He's probably going to try and dive her. Yep. And then I'm just going to hold on to my Q, because I knew he was going to do that. And boom, we got a double kill, boys. And that's uh, less than five minutes. I've got a first blood and a kill, because I knew exactly what they were going to do. I don't know if I can save her here from Lee Sin, but I know Lee Sin can't kill me because I got this. As soon as it comes back up. 
Yeah, no, Lee Sin shouldn't kill me. If he tries to go me under tower, I just hook him with my Q and kill him. Then Kaisa and is already back up. That's uh, kind of unfortunate. I'm just gonna flag him. Hey, like let him know Lee Sin was around here somewhere. Again, I would highly recommend Nautilus to kind of just anyone in the support realm. It's just, you can see what I can do right off the bat, and this is where I think he's very easy as a support, because you can kind of pick a lot of these early fights, because that's where he's strong. Late game, it gets kind of complicated, because a lot of people have a lot of abilities, and again, the scaling is working well. I'm probably going to go in and on her. And again, just kind of shut him down. Make his life hell. That's my job. I literally just make their life hell to go in on her. I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, I'm going to recall. I'm going to place a ward here just because it is Lee Sin Jungle. I am kind of expecting him to try and collapse on Misfortune. So look at my first items. I'm pretty sure Silas is a P and she is dual, but it looks like she's starting out with AD. I am just going to go bomb his Cinder just because... It's a no-brainer at this point. I am going to be getting close to them, obviously, with Silas jumping in. Kaisa, if you don't know, Kaisa very much likes to get close and engage. It just makes total sense there. And then Lee Sin also. Let's just burn him for a little bit more damage when I do get close to him naturally. Just working towards that Sunfire Cape. And then I'll show you exactly what I mean with the whole Sunfire Cape change. So yeah, burns nearby enemies, and your next immobilizing spell deals based on bonus HP. Super helpful. And then kind of something else I'm going to look into. I'm thinking about Warmongs, but I'm ideally thinking Abyssal Mask because it will give me that MR and at the same time, it'll also give me that ability to do a little extra magic damage and kind of work with Amumu because I know Amumu is also magic damage. <laughs> I would like to take this Cloud Drake. Uh, is Amumu strong enough for this? Oh, we do have a 3 and 0. Sin, so I'm not really sure how this is gonna work. Well, I'm no idea I'm a ward. Or maybe, yeah, this is uh, okay. This is a ballsy play. I like ballsy plays. And then considering a move is a pretty good tank, not terribly good early, but I think the combo. Combination of CC between me and a Moomoo, we could shut down Elise and if he jumps on down this. And that looks like, yeah, he's over there, so we can just go ahead and take this free. I think that's the earliest drag I've had so far in video. Then, yeah, hopefully Misfortune kind of bait him out a little bit. Mm, now I'm Moomoo's retreating. Our guys are back to lane. I am kind of concerned again, I don't know how well this is going to work considering a Moomoo's kind of low. And that's why I'm going around here. Let's see what they got. So, yeah, looks like she's sticking with the AD theme. Silas is sticking with the AP theme, which is, again, kind of nice to me. Gonna kind of back off that because that was a little bit more damage than I wanted, but I ultimately used my Q first. Second, actually. Sorry, second. And then it's Silas running Resolve. Yes, he is. So he's kind of going to be a bit tankier. So I think ideally I'm going to go for Kaisa rather than Silas. And I'll hopefully kind of bait out his latch. I do need to get this other quest rolling. And then just kind of dodging the damage, playing it real, real slow. You'll notice as Nautilus, again, I'm kind of like a blitz prank. I'm always looking for my next cube. It's going to be pretty hard. I might be able to drag them under tower. But there's a big kind of important thing you guys need to remember when you drag someone under tower. They need to hit you back in order in the tower range for the tower to actually start attacking them. Because if they don't hit you back, the tower doesn't target them. That's kind of important to know. Oh, Kaisa's running Halo Blaze, very nice. He's just kind of trying to bite us out, so I'm thinking Lee Sin's probably over here somewhere. Because Silas wants to jump in on me. Yeah. 
And again, he's just trying to make my life a little bit of a living hell. Just, you know, trying to stop me from getting my procs off. I think that's kind of a dangerous angle for her to take. Wish I could check the tower range again. Is there any way I can do that? I don't really know. And then, yeah, Kaisa is very, very difficult, unfortunately. Okay, Lee Sin's over up by a Moo Moo, so I might be more inclined to kind of do that. Force that a heal. Force that a flash, too. So, ignite. Good night for a flash and a heal. Totally worth it. And then I don't know if I want to take this just because at the end of the day we are fighting under their tower. I'm not really super inclined to do this and my ADC is kind of backing off. Uh, if she decides to come out more so here, I would definitely do that. And again, protect the president. I dodged that because I knew MF was going to be out of range. Otherwise, I would have totally taken that. So this is the interesting thing. They're going to push up on the tower. They're probably going to underestimate me again, based on how Silas is playing. So when the tower crushes in, I do kind of want to root him and take advantage of that. And see if he hits me back. Because if he hits me back, I'm going to have the turret helping me out finishing him off. Scare him a little bit. I don't want to scare him a little bit. Okay, this is where things get super ideal for me. Kind of let her know, hey, I've got this. They know I'm coming. So at the end of the day, I'm probably going to hit the farther target. And then flash out of there. I'm going to be able to finish that off. Come on. Oh my good golly gosh. Please don't want you to live through that. Oh no, she is not, guys. That is unfortunate, but hey, one kill for two. And then let's go ahead and see if I can get an abyssal mask item. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, so definitely I picked this up just because at the end of the day it helps my sustain. This is kind of key, and you'll see why I pick up abyssal mask. Because not only is the health and man CDR nice, but the magic resist is super helpful against people like Silas and Nivea. And then the other cool thing is, is that you see here, it actually makes the enemies take more magic damage. A lot of my abilities are magic damage, so it kind of makes sense. Those are kind of just two base items I would always pick up on Nautilus. Is Abyssal Mask and Sunfire Cape. That way you're covering your armor and your MR, and you're kind of getting, you know, full advantage of everything you have to offer. And then the cool thing is, is if you remember, the Sunfire Cape deals that immobilizing damage based off magic damage. So that actually increases the damage from that. And you see there, I get like a nice double stun going. The Q and the passive both have independent stuns. So, it's a double stun right off the bat. I don't know a lot of other champions that have a double stun. We're going to go ahead and get plates here, because I don't know where this Silas is. He's probably trying to help mid, maybe? No, maybe not. Oh, I wasn't paying attention there. Yeah, I don't know where this Silas is. Maybe they're taking Drake because, uh, it's, I don't know. That is a very dangerous play, I must say. We got Lee Sin right over here. I got my ultimate ready in case they decide to just jump in on us. I would like to take that. We are going to need a Moo Moo to kind of help us out with that, though. Uh, we can actually turn and burn on this Tice. So I kind of want to see if she plays for the ward. Ah, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I kind of want to see if Kaisa... Let's see how far she can push this. And again... Right there. 
So Lee Sin and Nivy are coming, so I don't know if we want to do this per se. Uh, I don't know, yeah, I don't know if we really want this voice. I'm gonna go ahead and knock up Lee Sin because they do not want him getting near my MF. Again, protect the president protocol, always. Uh, I'm gonna probably have to sacrifice myself here so she can get out. Get, just get out, get out, get out. And first death, I did it to, you know, protect my ADC, obviously. I probably could have waited a little bit longer, to be honest with you. So, gonna get that, and gonna start building up my armor. Uber important. Get some actual MR in me, get some actual armor in me, very helpful. I'd rather me definitely die than risking us both die. Yeah. So as the old saying goes, you gotta die sometime. But you see, we're still fairly early in the game. You already see where I'm kind of like, okay, I can tank some things, but I'm not as tanky as I was, like, first three levels. Like, I can't just walk up to anyone anymore and just take all their damage, especially in team fights. So you see, I'm falling off maybe a hair. Probably just play some board and ran. No, no, no. Yep, he's just gonna capture you. Okay, now Trin now I know Trindomir is coming in. That changes things a hair. Uh she can slow him down and he decided to turn around, so oh no, I forgot about the undying rage. Ah. Uh, well, Trinomir still won it. Wow, I'm surprised he lived. Shut down. Let's go ahead and take care of that pink ward. But you see here kind of what I'm talking about. Definitely just Nautilus is more forgiving as a support than a lot of other supports. At the end of the day, it's, it's not like Blitzcrank where it's all in that one Q to stun them and capture them. You kind of have, okay, you can use your Q to get close to them, then you can stun them again, then you can slow them, and you got this if you really want to just not lock someone down versus Blitzcrank. It's all in that Q and Thresh, it's all in that Q and maybe a little bit in your E. I don't have enough for uh, Sunfire Cape yet? No, I don't. What Abyssal Mask? Nope, I'm a little short. So, I think I'm gonna help out our buddy Timu because they seem to be rotating there and I have a grudge to settle with Mr. Silas. Never mind. Probably could kill this Kaisa with Trinvir's help if I could catch him. Yeah, that works for me. I wasn't really going there anyway. Ah, missed my Q. That was just because, like, I just wanted to get the assistance there. Kind of a waste of an Undying Rage, in my opinion, but hey, it, you know, I mean, hey, you got a kill out of it, so... Not a terrible waste, but still. Then Leeson might dive in on this... MF. I'm just kind of preparing for that eventuality. I'm gonna hit the back guy, as you can see there. Knocked him up too. I'm gonna go ahead and teleport out here. I might die again. Protect the president, boys. Always gotta protect the president. Again, it's more important that I die than her. Very important. She might actually be able to finish her off. Nice. It's a little bit ballsy of us. I will just get the Sunfire Cape just because the armor is super nice and plus I can actually take advantage of that ability now to the extra damage my whole life for felt. Nice. 
Mm-hmm. Probably overstayed a little bit long there, but at the end of the day, me and her died three, four kills. I'm going to say were. Some of you might disagree and say, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you're playing way too kind of, you're relying on your ADC too much, or you're not, or you're kind of risking yourself too much for your ADC. I, I like this ADC, you know, she's proven very effectively, granted, you know, she might be a little bit, her positioning might be a little off, but... I think I go ahead and place wards. Ooh, that's a good idea. So I am just gonna start warding for this. I have a little trifecta I'll show you guys when I do a ward for a drake. I do one here, one here, and I usually just do one over here. That way we can see pretty much all their most likely spots. Because they're probably gonna come from here, here, and then the minions are gonna cover the other, the lanes, and then we probably oh, can't see inside that bush, but it's always just kinda good to know. It's a good ambush point. I don't really wanna do this, guys, but if you guys want to, I'm totally fine to. Oh, the poison got him. Nice job. Boom, kaboom. I think Amumu can take this on his own. So what I'm going to kind of do is this kind of works out for me too because I kind of need minion executions and this is going to help push a lane. And plus it would be nice to kind of just take down a tower. Uh, Mumu, if you want to jump in on that, by all means, but right now, you know, me and her are taking a tower. Second tier tower, so that's pretty good. Considering... I don't know, this is a tough call. I think we push this wave in and back because their death timers are up, and they're probably regrouping and saying, okay, who can we kill? MF's probably the top of that list. I'm gonna go back right now. Let's see. Who's basic attack on this team? Riven, well, at least it's kind of. Maybe, uh, I'm not really sure what I want in this case. I'm not sure if I want Ninja Tab, and I'm not really sure if I want Merc Treads. So, I think I will go Merc Treads just because of Anivia. And Kaisa's. Basic attack, yes, An but her power doesn't really originate from her basic attack. It's more of the passive, which I'm pretty sure is magic based. An enemy has been slain. Plus, magic user, magic user. Looks like she's going a fair amount of magic, so about half. Not really concerned about Lisa and Riven. I, I don't think I could do that with a Riven, but I think I could hold her off long enough for reinforcement. This is probably my slowest support item level up, to be honest with you. Normally I'm pretty good about finishing this about 10 to 15 minutes-ish, but, you know, kind of focusing on other things at the moment. Double knock-up, boom, boom, dead. I'm gonna go ahead and just ward their jungle, just because I like being mean like that. Gonna go make sure this lane's pushing out, get myself some free farm. One thing I do not like about how they change the support items is before what would happen is once you cleared the thousand or got the final upgrade item, there was no punishment for killing minions. You can just free farm. Now, it the problem is is that once you lose the once you upgrade this to tier two or tier three, I guess in this case, that's it. Ooh, this is scary. You grant to get the passive income, but you can't execute minions, and you can't kill minions too many because then you'll actually get reduced gold. So it's kind of just like, well, that's great, but how am I supposed to get my income? I'm going to go ahead and say... Mumu, I really don't like this idea. Just because, oh, I do like going in on this river now, just because they are all right there. They're probably going to push back mid or top just because of where the minion positioning is. Mumu's trying to make a play. I like it, but I don't know if we have enough people. Okay, again, protect the president. 
Unfortunately, the president's all the way over yonder. Okay, now it's just kill whoever I can. I don't know if we can kill these people fast enough. I'm not sure gonna try though. Darn it, I can't target them. Though. Oh, the team Shroom came in for the win after all. Who would have thought? I don't know that we can do this because we did lose our jungler and our ADC is only fresh off the books. I would feel comfortable if Timu was dead and like Trinomir's back up. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get my Thistle Mask. I think I will. Well, actually, Zeke's congruence. Again, super helpful, kind of builds off what I'm going for. Probably would finish this out with a Zeke's Congruence. And then Dead Man's Plate's nice, Warmong's is also nice, just because, as you see, my mana's fine. I do need some decent health regeneration, just to kind of re-gear back up in between fights. And then, here's another thing, guys. I've also been getting into a lot of ARAM, surprisingly. Uh, and a lot of TFT. If you guys would like to see those videos, you know, just drop a comment saying, hey, can you post more of those ARAM and TFT videos? I'm doing a lot of experimental builds there. I think you guys would like it. Some of them are actually pretty cool. I actually tried Graves for the first time uh, a couple days ago. Um, and it was on ARAM. Very cool. I really like doing that. I wonder if I can kill this Yep. Apparently we can. I don't really want to jump in on Lee Sin. I really don't. I mean, it's, no, 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 no. I mean, you're going way too hard, boss. Actually. Ah, Moo Moo. Ah! Say, if you live there, there might have been a chance there, but nah, I blew my ultimate. I didn't blew my load. Yeah, very bad idea in my opinion, just because we were so close to the enemy base one, their death timers were running down, and we were outnumbered. I would, again, would have felt more comfortable if we had a Trindomir or MF kind of just backing us up, the fact that we didn't, and uh, maybe it has become a slow. I'm not really sure, is Timu going to split push? Like, what, what is he doing right now? Oh, he's trying to take the red. Very bad idea, in my opinion. Again, protect the president. And the president protects you. I'm gonna go ahead and finish her off with that. Leeson probably gonna go in on me here. Big mistake. Yeah, as you can see, uber big mistake there. Very, very uber big mistake. Because I want, as you can see, I want Misfortune to be attacked. I want them to be, like, just pounding me. Because that way I can just let Misfortune do all the damage and finish the fight. I do not do nearly as much damage as her. You see here, well, part of the reason is the Dark Harvest, obviously, but... And the thing is, as Nautilus, I don't really have the ability to win these fights on my own. I kind of do need someone else to fight the damage. I've got good CC, and I've got really good tankiness. I don't really have a lot of else to offer. I don't really have damage. Again, if I were Thresh, a little bit of a different story because he's more damage-oriented rather than CC compared to Nautilus. I'm going to go ahead and buy these. These congruence probably gonna pair it with a Moo Moo, Miss Well, Moo Moo, Misfortune. Trinomir is really no bad answer there. Uh, I really seem to be hanging around Misfortune a lot, so I'm probably gonna end up pairing it with her. Oh, Moo Moo, what are you doing, buddy? Oh, you got some. You could probably do this. 
need help. And again, knock up like the second or third person, just kind of get everyone caught in that tidal wave and get them knocked me away. Super nice. I thought Misfortune Arch Enemy was going to rotate down. I, yeah, I really thought they were going to rotate down. And you see that benefit, that Q I was talking about, or not the Q, the Ha! Protect the president, boys. Protect the president. And you see the benefit of that passive I was talking about the other day. It's, it does, it's not reset on. It's not just do your load and then you have to wait on a giant reset. It's reset per person. You can see where that becomes a huge advantage, like a team fight. Because kill them, stun the next person. Stun the next person. Stun the next person. And just allow this fortune to do a thing. Ah, crap. I thought, I thought we were gonna do it. Also, pretty helpful with clearing minions, as you can see. And then, yeah, this does make me a little nervous just because their death timers are so low. She probably can get this, but after that, we, we got a dip. Yeah, we got a dip. Yeah, they might not push. Oh, yep, they got it. Alright, perfect. No, you, you got a dip, girl. We don't have enough. And then we're gonna go ahead and get Infernal Drake off this. This is just uber helpful. I don't think I've died in a while either. Yeah, probably just gonna finish this off with the Warmongs because, again, the health. I'm actually gonna go for Giant's Belt. The health regen super nice just because it allows me to I don't have to back I can just kind of sit out of the fight for like a couple of minutes and get you know at the end of the day all right I'm ready back to go plus I feel like I've covered my resistances both armor and magic fairly well I'm gonna go ahead and pair the Zeke's congruence I think with a misfortune <laughs> they got triggered by the sunfire cape But, uh, yeah. What are you guys are doing, you know, at the U.S., at least where I'm at, is starting to open back up, you know, reopen after the pandemic and all that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pair this. I don't really care if I take damage here. My, turn, my shield blasts through it. Then, yeah, let's go ahead and take this. That's three and hips. Usually, like, at the end of the day, that's a you're gonna die symbol. They might jump in on us. You see, I'm taking tower shots like nothing. Yeah, no, too ballsy, bro. Too ballsy. Because, yeah, he's he's just trying to get one of us to jump in on him. He is just trying to get one of us to jump in on him. Alright, looks like this is the end. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed. Please keep watching my videos. Give me a like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.